Welcome back to the Bullet CEO channel. I'm the Bullet CEO where we discuss everything crypto. Uh, thank you all for coming back to the channel. Today we got a couple articles that's going to be discussing uh, adoption and uh, also how Binance has came out with their lending platform. Uh, let's get into the markets. Let's see. Let me refresh this. So, okay, we got a little bit of red in the market, but it's okay because we're still bullish on everything crypto. Let's get into the first article. So, this the first article is brought to you by uh, Cointelegraph, and it and the title reads, Brazil's, Brazilian Central Bank Adopts IMF Guidelines for Crypto Classification. Okay, let's see. The Central Bank of Brazil has moved to classify uh bought or sold cryptocurrency assets per International Monetary Fund, the IMF, uh, guidelines. A Brazilian Central Bank announced its decision on August 26th. With the new classifications under IMF standards, tr uh, traded cryptocurrencies will be classified as a non-financial product or fi non-financial products and as such will be accounted as goods on the central bank's balance sheet. A central bank balance sheet just like a regular bank's balance sheet summarizes its financial positions and is made up of assets, uh, equity, and liabilities. So, for those of you who don't know the IMF, uh, who they are, let's see, we go over here and it says uh, a little bit about the IMF. Uh, the International Monetary Fund is an organization of 189 countries working to foster a global monetary or corporation, secure financial stability facilitate international trades, promote high employment, sustainable economic growth, and reduce poverty around the world. So you go down a little bit, it says the IMF's primary purpose is to ensure the stability of the international monetary system, the system of exchange rates and international payments that enables countries and their citizens to transact with each other. The funds mandate uh, the fund's mandate was updated in 2012 to include all micro and economic and financial sectors issues that bear on global stability. So here are a couple of fun facts about the IMF. So uh, they was established in 1944. They are they have 189 member countries, uh, 150 uh, nationalities represented by staff. Uh, 24 executive directors representing 189 member countries. Uh, One trillion is the total amount IMF is able to lend to its member countries. Uh, 36 current lending arrangements. Zero percent interest rate on loans to low-income countries, and uh, about 303 million for hands-on uh, technical advice, policy-oriented training, and peer learning. So let's see, we go back over here to the article. And it says, since purchasing and selling cryptocurrencies involve the execution of foreign exchange contracts, the central bank considers selling and buying crypto assets in their export, in their ex export and uh, import statistics. Moreover, because Brazil, Brazil is a net importer of crypto assets, this apparently has contributed to lowering the trade surplus on its balance sheets. Okay, so uh, the significance of cryptocurrencies on the bank's balance sheet. According to Cointelegraph Brazil, the classification of cryptocurrencies as a good is significant. Uh, recognition of cryptocurrencies as a, a property would purportedly make them eligible to be used as a payment mechanism, which is big. <laughs> the central bank notes that these classifications were uh, recommended by the balance of the payments and statistic committee and advisory committee to the IMF's statistic department that focuses on external sector statistics methodology. So basically, you know, with this with this being uh reported, uh with them being able to uh you know make it eligible for as used as payment mechanisms, that's that's kind of, that's huge because now you'll be able to, to uh once this becomes law or once the regulation is passed uh, now you can utilize cryptocurrencies as tender and you can uh use them to pay with uh to pay at certain stores and certain things 
So it says the IMF calls out secure, uh, sir, sir. IMF calls for scrutiny on Libra. As previously reported by Cointelegraph, IMF Chief Economy Gita Gopana joined other officials in recommending that regulators be vigilant in observing and taking action against Facebook proposed cryptocurrency, Libra. Gopana speak, uh, specifically called on global regu uh, re regulators. Gopana speak, uh, specifically called on global regulators to act immediately. Gopana cited some specific concerns about Libra to saying, if you look particularly at countries that are not uh, reserve currency countries, would this lead to a backdoor dollar to, uh, dollarization? All these questions and whether there will be enough checks and balances in place to prevent money laundering are very important. Which I agree. I totally agree. Um, you know, Facebook came on the scene with the whole, you know, creating their own uh, cryptocurrency, which is Libra. You know, they got a whole lot of backlash from it. But from the fact of them coming out and uh, just proposing it has brought and has shed light on the whole cryptocurrency community as a, you know overall so we're going to see how you know we'll keep up to date on this to see how this uh, pans out uh, let's see the next article we have also is brought to you by coin telegraph and it says uh swift crypto banks receive licenses from financial regulator so the swiss financial market supervisory authority uh finma has also reportedly granted two banking and security dealer licenses to crypto focused banks. Two Swiss crypto uh, sp specializing firms, uh, Siba Crypto AG and Sigma, have received banking and security dealer license, the bank said in separate statements on August 26. So, you know, with them re receiving uh, the licenses, now they're able to dibble and dabble in crypto, which for us, those who've been in the crypto, uh, community in the crypto markets that's very beneficial to us who've been waiting for some type of regulations now you know I'm in the state so we're still waiting for uh, the states to come up with regu regulations in reference to cryptocurrency uh, so we can have the, you know more of the big players get in so it says with the new license SIBA expects to officially launch its new trading platform platform in early October 2019 the company stated, Siva's plan included the establishment of a digital asset platform for, for professional traders, firms, institutional clients, and as well as cust uh, custody, storage, and asset management. So basically, you know, they're offering uh, this, they're going to be offering their services to the institutional uh, investors, which we know the institutional uh, investors and also the professional traders those are the persons who have uh, the boatloads of money I would say so uh, let them uh, <laughs> regulate this so they can get on it in the game so it can uh, go on and raise all of our uh, portfolios up you know so it says Sigma said Sigma said uh, that regulators the regu regulatory approval will not will allow it to bring its digital assets offerings to the market which includes a custody and integrated liquid uh, liquidity platform for major digital assets including Bitcoin, Ether, and uh, digital Swiss franc tokens. Uh, the news follows FINMA's newly released guidance on regulatory requirements for blockchain-based payments. The guidance targets blockchain service providers including exchanges, wallet providers, and trading platforms. FINMA, em FINMA emphasizes that blockchain sector businesses are not exempt from anti-money laundering, anti -money laundering and know your customer uh, requirements so if you all know you know when signing up to different crypto uh, exchanges and platforms you have to put in your uh, information as far as you know your license well some most of them ask you for your license you know and to take a picture with your license and also uh, get all your information in, in regards to who you are so that goes back to the whole know your customer uh, re uh, requirements so at press time, the crypto markets are seeing a notable gains with Bitcoin up over 2.52% uh, over the past 24 hours to trade at uh, $10,324 according to Coin360. So, I mean, that that's major, you know, because uh, as we all know, uh, the money's over there. 
in the Alps, the Swiss, you know, so just to hear, you know, the fact that the Swiss uh, have given licenses to a couple different banks, you know, not just anybody, but banks that, that you know, that shows you the adoption that's, that's, that's coming down the pipeline. We just have to be patient and keep holding, you know, don't sell, just hold, you know, I'm not a financial advisor, you know, you need to do your own research. So, but, you know, we can, we can see where all, you know, these things are headed to. So, you know what I'm saying? In the, uh, in our last article, we have, uh, Binance launches crypto lending, uh, with up to 15% annual interest. Now, this is major. You know, as you, as we all know, Binance is one of the biggest players in the game right now. And just the simple fact for them to jump on the whole, uh, lending platform is major because you have a lot of people that's been in crypto for a while and, you know, why not make money, you know, on your crypto, you know, while you're holding it. Now, granted, you know, some people are for it. Some people are against it. You know, I'm never for, uh, you know, taking out money, uh, more than you can afford to take out, you know. So, you know, if you, if you do decide to do this, you have to make sure you do it with caution and make sure you know what you're doing. So let's get into the article. Binance, one of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange by trading volume, has launched a lending business in its bid to attract customer deposits. The company said in an announcement on Monday that Binance Lending will be available for customer subscriptions starting at uh, 6 o'clock UTC on August 28th on the first come, first serve basis. Initially, initially users will be able to lend their US dollar peg USDT. Uh, Ethereum Classic and Binance BNB cryptocurrency in order to earn interest payable from August 29th to September 11th. Uh, now I believe that they're trying to, you know, at this point, because you know, all of us U.S. Uh, U.S. citizens have to be off. Uh, I want to say uh, by the 23rd of Binance, and we have to go to uh, Binance USA. So it's. I think this is all, in, you know, it's, it's all playing. You know, he's trying to, they trying to capitalize off of uh, the U.S. citizens while they can because pretty soon it's going to be shut down. And uh, I forgot, if I'm not mistaken, it's about, it might be, don't hold me to it, it might be a little bit more 15% of their uh, uh, money comes from the U.S. Uh, citizens. So that's major. So. The annualized interest rate for the initial lending product with a 14-day fixed maturity term has been set at 15%, 10%, and 7% for BNB, USDT, and ECT, respectively. Binance puts out a total subscription cap of 200,000 BNB, 5 million USDT, and 20,000 ETC. If all initial plan, uh, if if all the initially planned products get full uh, full subscribe Binance will pay out an interest of uh, 1150 BNB 19,178 USDT and 53 ECT which is worth about a 50,000 as of press time well that, that's a lot each user account on Binance will have an initial hard cap of BNB USDT and ECT dominated lending products at 500 BNB, uh, 1 million USDT, and 1,000 ECT representatives, respectively, my buy. So in the meantime, Binance recently launched a margin trading business charges users who borrow BNB and USDT an annual, annualized interest of as much as 109% and 10.0375%, respectively. And just hours before the lending business announced, Binance said on its website that starting from August 27th, it will increase the annualized margin borrowing interest rate from for ECT for ETC from previously 7.3% to 14.6%. That's almost well, that is double. That's double, and you can't beat that. Double for your money, baby. The company said it will be consistently evaluate new coins and tokens to support its lending products based on demand. And new products will be revealed weekly on Monday and become available for subscriptions on Wednesday. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm ready for them to add XRP. You know, so I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, you can call me XRP fanboy if you want to, but I, I, I feel like XRP has the most potential out of all the cryptocurrencies uh, to date. So say what you want, XRP fanboy. 
Will the CEO? The plan may not be entirely surprised uh, to some, given CZ mentioned during a recent London event that the firm was planning to launch a lending business around mid-August. Which, if we look at the calendar, it's about mid-August, so just on time go with it. Uh, the launch is another move of Binance in its bid to diversify its business lines to attract and retain users weeks after it formally rolled out margin trading and borrowing in July and revealed plans to add future trading on its platform. So I mean, Binance is trying to take over the globe right here and, and I got to give my hats off to CZ because he, he has been very in influential in, in the crypto space and uh, getting the and pushing for adoption of cryptocurrencies and uh, if I'm not mistaken the first year that Binance was uh, launched they I want to say they profited 800 million dollars and that, that was kind of like the the aha moment for all these other uh, platforms to start launching and also for US uh, US different type of platforms to start taking notice and come up with their own so you know, big shouts out to Binance and CZ. So this is going to wrap up another uh, episode of the Bullet CEO uh, where everything we discuss is crypto. Uh, make sure you all hit that like and subscribe and come back and see me for the next video. Out.